What is going on guys, Kevin here, and today I wanna to share with you my top 25 places to visit in your lifetime, and this is gonna be the ultimate travel bucket list. I've been traveling the world for the last seven years or so. I have been to 50 countries, and I have done so many road trips across the United States, Canada, Mexico, Chile, Argentina, and more. So in this video, I want to culminate some of my favorites with you guys, but before we dive in, please like and subscribe means a lot to me and I have so many other guides on the channel, so check them out. But without further ado, let's go into my top 25 places to visit in your lifetime. First up is gonna be the Canadian Rockies, and this is just gonna be the mountain range as a whole, and this is going to include Banff National Park, Jasper National Park, Yoho National Park, and Kootenay National Park. It's one of the most beautiful mountain areas I have ever been to in my entire life. There is so much adventure here. There's alpine lakes, there's hiking, there's summits, there's backpacking. It's one of the most stunning places. What's great about it is that it is for everybody. There are so many places that are so accessible, like Moraine Lake, Lake Louise, and Emerald Lake, but then there's also super gnarly summits, lots of ice climbing, rock climbing, and things for hardcore adventurers. So this really has something for everybody. Next up at number two is going to be Patagonia, and for this I'm going to be focusing on the Argentina side of El Shalton and the Chile side of Torres del Paine. Patagonia kind of encapsulates a lot more of Chile and Argentina, but these are the two most well-known places and kind of the biggest bucket list spots to visit. You're gonna have Laguna de los Tres, Laguna Torre, base of the towers. There's so many awesome hikes here. It's one of the most rugged places I've ever been in the world. Kind of the mountains are really out there. It's some places that are so beautiful it's kind of hard to believe that they even exist. This is a place where you're gonna be putting on a lot of miles. You're gonna be in small towns. You're gonna to be doing a lot of camping and backpacking. It is definitely for a certain type of traveler, but it's one of the most amazing places I have ever been in my life. Next up at number three is going to be Iceland. And this is what most people refer to on Instagram as Mars and another planet and Iceland is its own planet. Iceland is one of the most geologically diverse places on the planet. It's such an amazing country. The best way to explore is going to be driving the ring road, which is the road that pretty much goes around the entire country. You can do it in anywhere from four days to two weeks. I've done it a few times and every time it has been amazing. And then if you'd like more after that, which honestly you're never gonna run out of places to see in Iceland, but you can then dive into the West Fjords and the Highlands, which are a lot more rugged places, a lot more kind of out there, take a lot more commitment to get to but are just unbelievable. Next up at number four is going to be Mykonos, and this is one of the most luxurious and beautiful islands in Greece. It is going to be the ultimate honeymoon and luxury travel destination. You know, this is the place that you want to go to if you kind of want to spoil yourself, spoil your significant other. You know, you want to get a villa in this beautiful white architecture buildings with your private pool overlooking the amazing island and coast. Downtown Mykonos is a great place to explore. The streets are so beautiful. And honestly, there's so many incredible luxury hotels that you could just hotel hop and never get sick of any of the places here. This is a great place to just relax and have a chill trip, much different from some of the previous ones I have just gone over. Next up at number five is going to be the Maldives. And this is one of the most unique places in the world, kind of like Mykonos. It is an extremely luxurious destination, but it is an incredible place. The country is made up of more than 1,200 small coral islands and sandbanks. And a lot of the country and a lot of the hotels are these overwater bungalows, which are so unique and such a cool thing to stay at. It is a heavy tourist destination. Obviously, you know, most people go there to enjoy being on the water in this aqua blue coral reef area with these amazing white sand beaches. You know, this is a place to relax, to chill out, to honeymoon. You just want to hang out and enjoy your time here.
Next up at number six is going to be Ushuaia, and this is the gateway to Antarctica. It is on the southern tip of Patagonia, and it has the beautiful Marshall Mountains. And one of the day hikes that we did here that we really enjoyed was Laguna Esmeralda, which was just maybe 15 to 30 minutes up the road. Ushuaia is so cool because it is actually like referred to as the end of the world. And Brie and I, when we bought a van in Santiago, Chile, we drove 11,000 miles through Chile and Argentina and the furthest south we went was Ushuaia because it was, you know, the end of the world. And there's, you can't go any further, you know, any more south is Antarctica. So this is a really special place and, you know, we got to see cruise ships take off going out to Antarctica, which is just, it's a really cool place. Next up at number seven is gonna be Salinas Grandes, and this is in Northern Argentina, and this is the coolest salt flats that I have ever been to. There are just so many unique patterns here. You know, they have the hexagonal dried salt flats, but then they also have these blue pools that are aligned in these parallel lines that are extremely salinated, and they have ojos de salar. The color of these pools is so unbelievable, and our guide actually said that we could try the water. It's extremely salty, as I'm sure you can imagine. We got to mob our minivan out on the salt flats. We had some really moody conditions, and it was just one of the most out there places, and it was a very cool experience. Definitely more one of the under the radar type places in Argentina. And number eight is gonna be Huacachina, which is in the Ica Desert of Peru. And this is a desert oasis built into the desert and it's on the coast of Peru and it's just this little town. There's only one road in and one road out and that's it. And then you're just surrounded by sand dunes for miles and miles and miles. It's such an incredible place. It's really unique. I feel like I'm saying that about most places in this video, but you know, there's just so many amazing places on planet Earth, and this is one of the crazier ones for sure. We rented sandboards, we drove out on four by fours onto the sand dunes. There's some awesome excursions to do here, and you can come straight from Lima on a tour, so it's super accessible and easy to get to. Number nine is also going to be in Peru, and this is just kind of be referring to the Andes Mountains. The Andes are home to one of the most sacred places in the world, and that is gonna be Machu Picchu. There's tons of awesome backpacking, trekking, and it is an all-around adventurer's paradise. Some of my favorite places here are Lake Human Tide, the Osangate Trek, Rainbow Mountain, the Salkantai Trek, Machu Picchu, of course, Alantai Tambo. There is just so many amazing places kind of alongside Patagonia, you know, the Andes Mountains of Peru are just very special. And the altitude here is some of the highest altitude mountains, especially compared to Patagonia, where there's, you know, nine, 10,000 foot peaks, where here, there's a lot of peaks over 20,000 feet. <laughs> it's a very rugged place. Number 10 is going to be Coron in the Philippines, and this is a beautiful island with so much to do. It's my favorite island that I have been to in the Philippines. Some places that you definitely have to make sure to check out while you're here are gonna be Coron Bay, Banana Island, Bulog Island, Twin Lagoons, Lake Kayangan, and there much, much more. Pretty much when you get there, you're gonna be exploring in Coron, get a hotel there, and then you're just gonna take boat tours every day, and every day you're gonna to go to different islands, different sandbanks, different crazy beaches. It's really awesome, and it's awesome just to explore on the boat every day. Number 11 is gonna be the San Juan Mountains of Colorado. In my opinion, this is some of the most beautiful mountain area in the state of Colorado. For me, it feels way more rugged than the mountains in Rocky Mountain National Park and the Front Range of Colorado. Some of my favorite places down here are Ure, which is called the Switzerland of America, Maroon Bells, Island Lake Hike, 
Ice Lake hike, the Crystal Mill, and so much more. The fall colors here are incredible. There's a lot of hidden waterfalls and there's just so many amazing hikes. There's some great hot springs. Now that I'm living in Denver too, I try to get down there as much as I can. I really love the San Juan Mountains. Number 12 is going to be Antelope Canyon, Arizona. And this is one of the most famous places in the Southwest, but we actually saw it from a different vantage point than what people typically see it as. We saw it from kayaking to Upper Antelope Canyon where you actually don't need a permit like Southern Antelope Canyon. Couldn't recommend this enough. You just rent kayaks in page. And then we actually camped on Antelope Island, which is just felt super out there. And then we did a day trip kayaking from where we slept into Antelope Canyon. You kind of park your kayak and then you just walk as far as you want. I think we did three or four miles and it was awesome. Number 13 is gonna be Kongsi Falls in Laos, and this is a 1.4 mile round trip loop waterfall hike just outside of Luang Prabang, which is the capital of Laos. It is a three tiered waterfall on a steep hillside and tons of shallow pools to swim in, and the water color is just incredible. It's one of the most beautiful waterfalls I've ever been to, and it's awesome getting there because most people, you just rent a motorbike in Luang Prabang, and then you ride it to the waterfall, maybe 30, 40 minutes, and we did it for sunrise. You're just going through the mountainside of Laos. It is an incredible experience. All right, number 14, the Utah Badlands. I don't even know where to start with this. Utah is one of my favorite places in the world. It's one of the most rugged places in the Southwest. There is so, so, so much to do in Utah, ranging from national parks to state parks to BLM land to unique Airbnb stays and adventure. This is one of my favorite places in the world. I have tons of videos on different areas here, kind of more specific to different areas of Utah and Utah as a whole. So check those out if you'd like to see more informative and detailed travel guides. But some of my favorite places here, you know, Moab, of course, Capitol Reef National Park, Factory Butte, the mountains in the north and the salt flats in the north, all the way down to Zion in the southwest, and St. George is a great hub for adventure. There's a never-ending amount of things to do in Utah. Number 15 is going to be Marble Caves, and this is one of the coolest places I've ever been to on a lake. The Marble Caves of Chile are lake caves made from calcium carbonite cliffs. This is just east of Parque National Laguna San Rafael. The town to stay in when you're going to visit here is Puerto Rio Tranquilo, and the caves are on the General Carrera Lake. This is an amazing travel destination. The lake itself is massive, and you drive down this really steep road to get to the base of the Marble Caves, and then you can either get on a boat like we did, or you can rent a kayak and then go right into the marble caves on the boat or the kayak. It's a great place for photography. The watercolor is really cool. The limestone rock is insane looking and it's just really aesthetically pleasing. Number 16 is going to be Oahu, Hawaii. Who doesn't love Hawaii? It's one of the coolest travel destinations that has a great mixture of relaxing tropical paradise with beautiful scenery and adventure. Some of my favorite things in Oahu are <laughs> all of the acai bowls I get to eat when I'm there. The North Shore is great to watch people go surfing on some big waves. Palipuka, Diamond Head Beach, and the Notches Hike. Oahu downtown itself is incredible. You know, the beaches are just pristine white sand beaches. Oahu is a very special place, and pretty much anywhere you drive, you're gonna see those iconic ridge lines, and it is just an amazing place to travel to. <laughs>
Number 17 is going to be the Grand Canyon. And this, I think, is going to be on every single bucket list. This is one of the ultimate bucket list travel locations. The Grand Canyon in Arizona showcases millions of years of geological history. It has some of the best sunrises and sunsets in the world and its accessibility makes it great for people who don't like to hike, but there are also a ton of amazing trails for those looking for adventure. We actually hiked the Bright Angel Trail, which goes from the South Rim all the way down to the Colorado River, and then you hike back up. It's a huge like 19 mile day with, with like 5,000 feet of elevation gain on the second half of your hike. So it's a big day, but if you're up for it, definitely recommend it. Number 18 is going to be Florence, Italy, and this is the capital of Italy's Tuscany region, which is home to a handful of masterpieces of Renaissance art. The architecture is incredible, especially on the famous Duomo, which is one of the most iconic buildings in Italy. Michelangelo's David sculpture is here, the Ponte Vecchio is here, and some of the best Italian food in the world lies in Florence. I feel like of all the cities I have been to in Italy, Florence kind of feels the most Italian, it feels the most cultural, it feels like the most that I'm in it, and it's an amazing place that I've been to a few times and I can't wait to get back there again. Number 19 is going to be Mendoza, Argentina, and Mendoza is the ultimate wine lover's place to visit. This is the best wine country destination in South America. If you love Malbec, that's one of their specialties in Mendoza. There's so many awesome homestays and hotels that where you can just rent bikes and hop from vineyard to vineyard. It's a great place to take your significant other. When Bree and I van life South America for three months, when we came to Mendoza, we didn't drive the van for four days. We just rode bikes and drank wine every single day. And it was incredible. Number 20 is going to be Bangkok, and Bangkok is the capital of Thailand and where you will likely fly into if you're traveling anywhere in the country. Thailand has it all from the jungles in the north to the tropical islands in the south, but for this I want to focus just on Bangkok because Bangkok is one of the most vibrant cities I've ever been to. It has such a chaotic beauty to it. There's so many incredible markets, so much great food, the culture is amazing, and there's so many temples and markets to explore that you'll have an amazing time here before heading anywhere else in the country. And it's extremely affordable, and over the years it has definitely turned into a pretty hotspot digital nomad location. So there's a lot of great hotels, a lot of great people to network with if you're younger and kind of just traveling and working. I love Bangkok, and it's one of my favorite cities in Asia. Number 21 is going to be Taiwan. And for this one, I'm just gonna say kind of the entirety of Taiwan. I kind of came here as an afterthought when I had a week to kill in between trips in Asia a few years ago. But honestly, this country is unbelievable. It blew me away. There was so much to do here. I ended up going into the countryside and you could actually do Ubers. The train system was super advanced and easy to follow. So I kind of went all over. Some of my favorite places that you should definitely check out if you're coming here are going to be Moon World, Taipei 101, Yelu Geo Park, Keeping Island Geo Park, and Don Forest Park downtown. Number 22 is going to be the Atacama Desert of Chile, and this is sitting just under 8,000 feet above sea level. It's one of the most persistently dry corners of the planet. It's a beautiful desert with some pretty crazy rock formations and desert patterns. Some of my favorite places here are Valley de la Luna, the Salt Flats, and all of the flamingos that you come across. I don't think I've ever seen so many flamingos in the wild in my life. And it's just an extremely rugged desert to go to and it just really puts you out there. San Pedro de Atacama is awesome as well. It's a really cool desert to visit.
Next up is going to be Bali, Indonesia, and anyone that has been will agree that this is one of the coolest destinations in the world. This is a digital nomad's paradise. I've been to Bali four or five times, and every single time I'm here, I've had the best trip ever. Bali sort of has its own way of life. You get around by motorbikes, you stay at insanely cheap Airbnb villas that have the most beautiful private pools and rooms. And by day, you just explore the country and you'll find beauty in every single direction. There's mountains, beaches, jagged coast, waterfalls, jungles, caves. There's so much to explore here and the food is incredible. Number 24 is going to be the Yucatan Peninsula, and this is the eastern side of Mexico that is home to Cancun, Playa del Carmen, and Tulum most famously, but it also extends to the entire peninsula. This is a great place for a relaxing vacation at an all-inclusive resort where you can just kind of hang out on the beach and eat and drink but it's also a great place for adventure with tons of cenotes to explore. A cenote is an underground chamber or cave that contains permanent water, pretty much a natural sinkhole, and there are more than 6,000 cenotes in the Yucatan Peninsula, so you'll never run out of things to explore aside from all of the white sand beaches, swimming with whale sharks, and all of the amazing resorts here. And last up is going to be Chamonix, France, and this is kind of the hub for the French Alps. Chamonix is one of the coolest mountain towns I've ever been to. The town is awesome and you can access the mountains via cable car or hiking, and there's a ton of amazing hiking trails here. It is a hot spot for alpinism for, for both locals and people from overseas. Chamonix is incredible and it is kind of in the middle of all these amazing places. You know, it's close to Zermatt, it's close to the Italian Alps, the Austrian Alps. It is just amazing. And that is gonna wrap up this video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed my top 25 places to visit in your lifetime. It means the world to me if you could like this video, subscribe, and turn on the bell for notifications. I have tons of other videos like this. I hope you guys stay around to check some of them out and see what is to come. Thank you so much, and I will see you guys later.